Thanks, Professor Hillen, for this uh, fantastic, I think, introduction to different sorts of discussion of conte contemporary culture. And uh, I will use few inspirations, so I will not speak what I intended to speak, but will use some of the reflections uh, that I got during the previous lecture, because we were speaking about this scene. So the whole idea for this book, Cultural Diplomacy, uh, it's a kind of, a, let's say, uh, negotiated, let's say, idea, because we didn't want to make a book about cultural diplomacy. The conference we did in Belgrade was a conference about the role of bitter festival, one self-initiated festival, but two great people from Belgrade, Mira Trailovic and Jovan Cirilov, who acted as a theater scene where the whole cutting edge theater scene could be seen in 60s, in 70s, only in Belgrade and nowhere else in the world in that moment, meaning the West and the East, two sides of, in, from the two different sides of Iron Curtain and so on. So, that's what you wanted, in fact, to show and to discuss on our conference, not cultural diplomacy, but bottom-up cultural diplomacy, how professionals created in socialist Yugoslavia their autonomous space, where they invited whom they wanted from living theater and bread and puppet, which were objected very much by American embassy by the way, in Belgrade, because in those times, those theaters has been really anti-establishment, anti-American, and so on, theaters. And on the other side, cutting-edge studios from Moscow, from Krakow, from Wroclaw, Grotowski, and others, uh, all dissident theater troops from Prague, and so on, were also invited and met for the first time in 67, 68, and so on from Schechner till, I don't know, Tadeusz Kantor, and so on. So that was our idea. Let's speak about this socialist heritage, which somehow is neglected. Nobody is speaking about it anymore. Nobody is speaking about non-aligned movement anymore. And, uh, for example, that, as a political, uh, how to say, ideology of the time of Yugoslavia, even in one moment prevented Bitev to be really autonomous, but if you negotiate well, you can still be what you are, even if you get in position that on the theater festival, which has to gather avant-garde art, you have to show Katakali, because Nehru, India, this is our, our great political friends, and so on. And yes, the great spirit of Mira Trailovic long before anthropological theater of Barba and Brook, because Brook was coming, but with the Shakespeare in that moment in Belgrade, she realized that she can justify Katakali as a theater roof of contemporary theater. And from that moment, she decided to have every year one traditional ethnic theater, but not more than that, only one. So, uh, I'm just saying, yes, Bitter Festival, which inspired us to create conference and then later this book, was a kind of uh, autonomous public space of the theater artists and curators who every day had to negotiate their freedom and their capacity of acting, but Every day were rethinking themselves and their position on the world scene. So they were ambitious enough to look to look around and to really, how I'd say, to be now to come back again to a lecture and to real, but not in the sense how today uh, art schools are asked. Alia European League of the Institute for the Arts just in September made a big seminar and conference, how to teach artists, how we, art schools, should teach artists 
to be entrepreneurs and to earn money. And the European commissioner was telling that each artist can have a chance to become Damien Hirst and so on. No, not entrepreneurial in this sense, but entrepreneurial in being subversive, being different, allowing itself, himself, herself, and the festival as such, to act uh, according to the ethics they share and they would like to share. And it's really something which I think was uh, rare as a space of cultural freedom. And that was the reason why this book is in a certain sense homage to this festival, although that's again something that is very I would say, good to debate. Why this book then do not have a title which was a conference title, BTF and Cultural Diplomacy? Because to get money for the print, we had to make a compromise and to edit more text about international collaboration and so on. So BTF is half of the book, let's say, or part of the book, and the other part are analysis, state of the art in international cultural cooperation. Now, some of you might think, oh God, she is the editor and she tells openly how she had to change and to accept and so on. I thought it's a big chance and it's in fact probably even better to have such a huge book instead to have a small book uh, where everything which is now questionable in Serbian and Balkan international relations can be revisited, presented in English language thus accessible to everyone in the world who would, who would be interesting. Anyway, to conclude before giving the word to Robert, this book is, uh, uh, is created, is structured in uh, five different, uh, let's say, chapters. Three of them are really from the conference, but one is more about cultural diplomacy, its meaning, but focusing on bottom-up cultural diplomacy. Second one is really about art festivals and different sorts of art curated manifestations as a bottom-up cultural diplomacy. And the third chapter that Liliana has edited is about para diplomacy, it's about shifting trends, in new sorts of cultural relations, uh, while the fourth and fifth are really about challenges and perspectives of European and international cultural cooperation in Serbia. And yes, it's about also re-questioning identities, what identities all these institutions, all this festival, and be the festival today, is really representing in this changing changing world. Thus, we see this book again as a space for debate, for opening debate, as a platform for questioning, re-questioning, dialoguing, and once again, putting this dissonant heritage of socialism, returning back in the public sphere, because now, there is a consensus in the Balkans, in former Yugoslavian country, that everything which was, I'm speaking about mainstream uh, cultural politics, that everything which used to be was wrong, ideologically biased, and so on. So we wanted to show with this book that that's not true, that the heritage of socialism is diversified, that it still can be inspirational and stimulative. So we were very happy that uh, Robert, uh, in fact, was in a certain kind uh, uh, seeing this book as also interesting for Macedonia. And, and that was happening in the moment of very tense cultural diploma diplomatic relations in between Serbia and Macedonia. <laughs> no, I don't think that one book can really change uh, much 
state diplomatic relations. But I think that this kind of festivals, manifestations, seminars are really the real kind of bottom-up cultural diplomacy, which is the one who will dominate in the future. So I will ask Robert to tell us what he thinks about cultural diplomacy and how ministers of culture should interfere in this sphere, which often is blocked by ministries of foreign affairs. Изборувам пак на македонски ќе ми простат на јународните гости од повеќе причини. А овај... Секако дека професорката Милена на сите нас ни беше и професор и инспирација сите овие години и на некој начин кога е ви самиот разбрав дека направиле книга за културната дипломатија помислив дека тоа може повторно да биде еден вид на не само теориска рамка, туку еден вид на промислување кое што многу ке ни помогне околу прашањето за културната дипломатија во некаков македонски контекст. Пред се затоа што таа има многу голем поглед и познавање, но од друга страна многу се, многу се блиски и контекстите помеѓу Македонија, Србија, целиот регион на југоисточна Европа и токму овој регион сега се соочува со потребата да биде во склоп со европските културни политики, а нели Федерика Могерини ја нагласи улогата на културната дипломатија во новите политики, јавни политики на Европската унија. Така што на некој начин тоа станува прашање на патот кон Европската унија. Ние секако мора да размислиме и на кој начин ќе го поставиме ние нашиот, би го нарекол, еве, систем на културна дипломатија. Во таа смисла ние веднаш се амбицирафме да направиме стратегија за културна дипломатија и да видиме што тоа ќе значи во, а, а, во институционална рамка. Генерално, како и во сите други полиња, наследивме една хаотична ситуација во која што а, без разлика на, значи, а, на, актуелната, а, на, на актуелните модели на културна дипломатија не пишани, а адхок или не класични, и јас мислам дека токму оваа книга нуди и промислува многу такви модели на нетипична форма или задоволување на функцијата на културна дипломатија, дека значи, тоа се случуваше и со Македонија од најмалку од 90-те наваму, затоа што ние цело време моравме им преку во еве на водници преку една непишана културна дипломатија да ги преговараме своите а, идентитетски и државнички а, позиции во однос на другите земји така што и самата Македонија може да биде многу интересен а, пример за ова фокус а, предмет на проучување на кој начин ние сите овие години го решававме тоа но а, Повторно, еве, и изчекорот на новите политики кон преговарањето на нашите позиции, повторно во однос на, на соседите, пак не соочува, пак сме исправени пред истиот проблем. Значи, прашањето на културната дипломатија од многу аспекти станува битно во Македонија и нас целиот и практичен, и теориски, и истражувачки ум ни е потребен. И од тие причини јас и сметам дека оваа книга треба и да се, секако да се прочита, но и да се преведе на македонски, затоа што верувам дека ќе биде многу потребна. Ние во наследивме баш едни такви хотични односи. 
меѓу Министерството за култура и Министерството за надворешни работи од тој аспект. А, имаме, а, имаме еден и пол културен центар. А, оној во Софија е направен по сите стандарди, со широк дипломатски статус, а, баш така изграден како би го нарекол е као тврдина. За разлика од тоа, културниот центар во а, во Нјујорк функционира преку Сдружение на граѓани. Париското ателје и не може да се нарече во вистинска смисла на зборот културен центар, а културниот центар во Истанбул е само на хартија. Ингеренциите се измешани, не се, не се знае, има, како да кажам, прелевање или непостојање на, на, на надлежности, во однос на сите тие работи и ние се соочуваме значи со потребата тука да одбереме некаков модел се разбира дека а, најлесниот модел е веќе да го да ги испитаме да го испитаме она што е постоечко а тоа е овој систем на а, на на а, национални центри или национални институти тие се веќе и обединети во мрежата Юник но истовремено веќе се соочуваме која ќе ги разговараме нели тие идеи или планови, веќе и со критиката на тој модел. Така што аз би сакал еве дури и Паскал да ни каже што мисли нели а, за, за а, мрежата на, на, на центри за Юник од аспект на цела оваа негова брилијантна критика нели на, а, на ова неолиберална бија нарекол измислица. Значи, а, Еве, ние е, планираме во 2018, се надевам да излеземе со стратегија на културна дипломатија, која што на некој начин ќе ги структурира нашите акции, ќе воведе некако фред и ќе ни предстои, е, како што реков, и прибирање на, е, на теоретскиот и практичниот ум, но се разбира повторно јавна дебата колку, како и каков тип на културна дипломатија ни е потребно, но... Е, Ургентната потреба секако се наметнува. Мали символички чинови беше тоа што е јас како министр за култура патував и во Бугарија, да не речам дека сум подбудното око на грчкиот амбасадор кој што сите наши потези и во поглед на Скопје 2014 и генерално као културни политики ги наблюдува и секако и сите други аспекти од меѓународната соработка. Во тој контекст, нели, баш ми е задоволство што и Милена и Лилијана се со нас и еве преку оваа соработка, преку ова споделување на ресурсите, тие ни помагаат и го надополнуваат можеби тоа што ние во овој момент нај соодветно го немаме. Thank you. Um, I'm not very sure that uh, national cultural centers abroad, neither unique as such, are really the best actors in the field of uh, cultural diplomacy, but there are many other models and I think we can explore it and debate together and find in Serbia also now is obsessed with the idea of building in Beijing and uh, New York, Paris and so on, cultural centers. But for example, for us in Belgrade, it was very clear that the best uh, cultural action, bilateral kind of, was Swedish. Uh, not built on the base of cultural institution, but on the very proactive cultural attaché who visited every single NGO, university, unit, and so on, and in three years succeeded to make such a kind of bilateral links that are continuously developing, and so on. So I'm just telling this as a, because there is, and I think that in the book there are a lot of other examples, but I will now ask Lilian Rogac Mijatovic that in fact, she made her PhD in the field of cultural diplomacy and what 
culture can do in reshaping the image of the country, establishing links with others and uh, break all negative stereotype uh, which has to be broken. But, so, Liljana, please, can you give us your ideas on the cultural diplomacy issue? Thank you. Dobro uh, večer. Thank you all really for staying because it's really kind of late. This is probably the kind of latest book talk in my life, but it's exciting. Um, first of all, I would really like to thank both uh, Robert and Biljana uh, and uh, to say just a short story about really how we came to be uh, right here, right now, talking about a book. Uh, actually, it was a really small talk chat through Facebook between Biljana and me. I was uh, trying to say happy birthday and everything. And from there, it started. And we really kind of uh, completely non-formally uh, organized this thing. Why am I talking uh, about this? Uh, I'm talking about, uh, it's not even a model. It's, uh, as Robert said, a symbolic act uh, that we didn't wait even for the Ministry of Culture because the Creative Desk uh, Europe Serbia is a co-publisher of the book together with Faculty of Drama Arts, where I come from. So we didn't wait for the publisher to organize us, you know, the big promotion. But it really all started from very personal initiatives, from talk, from a personal talk. After the book promotion within the Bitter Festival uh, followed a book promotion in Brussels, where Professor Milena was on the uh, NCAT uh, conference, but it was also more a kind of personal initiative. And that's really my personal also understanding of how cultural diplomacy today works best. So you don't wait for the structures to work for you, you don't wait for the buildings, but as we heard in the previous lecture, we use what there is, either as an occasion even, and either to merge to events, or really just use the opportunity to be there, to stand in. So here we are at this very stage. Thank you very much for that. And now, um, about the context, of course, cultural diplomacy today is not reserved for the governments, respectfully. The minister is here with us, thank you, but it's Robert at the first place, I, I would like to say, and then afterwards the minister. So not only the government, not only the, let's call it uh, public institutions, you know, all the authorities, uh, it's of course, also the business, but it's also the individuals, the civil sector, call it the non-government, call it whatever. It's different networks as well. So a very diversified field of actors who are involved. And what uh, is especially important in this sense uh, of the expanding field of cultural diplomacy is uh, its implications in this whole world uh, where the geopolitics and power are actually increasingly mobilized by both and often populist and image-driven uh, structures and actions. And we heard also a bit of reflections, I think, in the previous talk. So as the famous Joseph Nye, uh, says even the whole field of international relations today has become a little bit of um, uh, the fight in the discourse. So whose story wins? Whose story wins? Now, um, how to look at cultural diplomacy? Uh, in my opinion, it really might be a good channel, uh, and that's uh, how I uh, really want to understand this context where we are uh, and where we will be these three days as the context to ask also big questions of the world we live in and the, the whole complexities of the world we live in and 
also a way of mapping that world. So both uh, in a kind of mental and, and a kind of cartographic way, so through public spaces and their use. And now, um, this golden book, as you see, it's, it's really kind of a golden, uh, gold color of the book. Um, it's, it's a bit of a paradox, because uh, it doesn't reflect uh, at all of what in academic literature is known as the golden age of cultural diplomacy, which is actually related to the uh, Cold War period. And the notion of cultural diplomacy through propaganda, through one-way communication, through promotion, and if you want, through bilateral logic, because the cultural diplomacy of today is mostly realized through multilateral logic and uh, relations. Now, how arts and culture, or if they can do at all, um, contribute to going beyond the set dichotomies, either call it East-West, uh, we versus other, diversity difference, etc. I believe it, that cultural diplomacy can do that. Now, this book really offers a wide range of interdisciplinary perspectives. Uh, and it shows how art practices, uh, and even through some theoretical observations, can and uh, are relevant for uh, even the social, the political uh, sphere of, of the world today. And even more importantly, how they can uh, actually be used as a platform to, of course, foster dialogue, understanding, not only between states, as we said, it's a really kind of a, a second track uh, of, the, of the official diplomacy, but uh, how it can cultivate true understanding and make connections between uh, people. Uh, what I really find very important uh, in the context of Bitter Festival and uh, its uh, uh, traditions is uh, also mentioned in, in this book. And this is how festivals cultivate new qualities of cultural relations and even foster notions, uh, if you want, of transnational identities. Um, and uh, through these, uh, they in a way undermine the political dichotomies that I was talking about. So there are really many, many angles that this book tackles. So artists as diplomats, uh, promotion uh, uh, of countries through, for instance, gastro diplomacy. And uh, it even tackles these um, notions of social networks and how uh, cultural diplomacy of today really works through um, this uh, digital soft power notion. So finally, I just want to, to say uh, one more word. And this is that uh, this book also calls, uh, which might seem paradoxical in a way, but it really calls even for a kind of cultural resistance as a kind of counter narrative to the official, to the call it normative notions of cultural diplomacy. So I believe that this uh, occasion that we are gather around really um, might be a way for fostering this notion. So thank you very much for this. Thank you. And one more dimension, which is exactly the topic of Vienna Kanurovska Kulakovsky text, is that cultural diplomacy is and might be a dialogue with civil society. So finally, Ask you exactly to tell about uh, what your text is bringing to us. Thank you. Uh, actually, my text is about um, the position from where I depart and the position that I can say I present or represent in some way. And this is the civil sector, or specifically, as we said, uh, 
independent cultural sector. This is the scene. Scene. Now it's scene. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is scene, of course. Um, Yes, and uh, uh, this text uh, appeared as part of uh, a bit of conference, and uh, I'm this, in this part uh, of the book, which considers uh, this um, bit of uh, dialogue there. And I would say that um, this, uh, I would recommend that you can read this text uh, to, to, to kind of uh, uh, have a bit of, bit bit of glimpse of the atmosphere there, because for me it was one of the really most exciting uh, uh, conferences that I have been in the past uh, years. And uh, yeah, the, the only thing, I don't operate uh, theoretically in the field of cultural diplomacy, but uh, of course through my studies and uh, what I do, I read uh, books and theory, and what it's important is that uh, as a part of civil society sector, I position myself and our colleagues or the scene as one of the pillars of the cultural diplomacy. So I tried actually to depict what is the cultural diplomacy in its totality and that it embraces the three sectors, which is uh, is governmental, the private, but also the civil sector. And what it's a very, how to say, specific when this text uh, really uh, was written was in last year, actually when we were going through this political crisis where <laughs> actually there was uh, nothing but censorship in that sense uh, in Macedonia. And I tried to be the voice of the let's say, one of the people in the civil sector to really kind of accent the necessity of a dialogue with uh, the civil society and independent cultural scene. And um, also I tried to illustrate how we create this space where the other type of dialogue is created and uh, then I mentioned their Nomad Dance Academy as one of these uh, platforms that I work within for the past uh, 10 years and uh, some colleagues will talk about. But also I talked about other networks and networking and creation of these social ties that really um, create another, let's say, voice that it's a diplomatic voice. And this is, I mentioned there also, these regional platforms, this cooperativa, this national platforms, what we had, have uh, Yadro Association for Independent Cultural Scene. Because um, I think that those were these bodies that uh, prevailed or uh, kind of helped uh, us in the civil society in Macedonia somehow to continue and to be voiced and to be heard. So, yes, shortly that. And yes, and um, uh, actually what I wanted to say is that uh, we, as you said, this is this symbolic act, uh, as you were saying, but we never waited this space or this autonomy space to be created by someone else. But as the last picture, we are trying for the past years to really uh, kind of uh, uh, say what is the public space or to perform acts and enact what is the public space probably from the civil sector position. Thank you very much. It's too late to enhance further any kind of discussion. We hope that the book, at least these three chapters which are here, cultural diplomacy chapter, will be translated in Macedonia and thus maybe more uh, accessible to audience. We, uh, with this book also, and with all what we, I think all of us are doing in our life, we are fighting for autonomy of the cultural sphere. Not only saying like you in civil society you have autonomy anyway, we are fighting for the, the autonomy of the public sector in culture at least to have this kind of autonomy that university is still having and hardly keeping because this autonomy, university autonomy is less and less. We just witnessed a few days ago that uh, rector of Montenegrin University was 
dismissed because not obeying the government. So we live in a situation where everybody speaks about freedom, freedom of speech, but in fact, or freedom of acting, but in fact, this freedom is not yet, uh, not yet totally, yet, not achieved. Yeah, it's even less and less. It's even in the crisis because unfortunately many of us, due, uh, due to auto-censorship, specifically related to cultural, international cultural relations, intercultural dialogue and so on, are in fact contributing to these limits of the freedom. That's the reason I think that uh, it's so important to have this bottom-up cultural diplomacy where the cultural institutions will act and civil society organizations are going to act uh, independently, autonomously, and uh, really according to uh, what, what they want to achieve in international relations. So thank you very much for listening to us. And I think we should go. Biljana, you tell us now where we go no, for dinner. No, we, we go here because it okay. was very late <laughs> and everything will be said. Thank you very much. <laughs>